Oh, right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dummy Dummy Discussion. I'm your host, Dummy Dummy Enthusiast, Ducky Dunk. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing NXT, December 13, 2022 episode. So, NXT deadline was this past Saturday, and it was a huge night for NXT. New champions were crowned, and the very first Iron Survivors were t- determined. So, this episode or edition of NXT would feature those winners and some grudge matches, and also. It was an opportunity for the gold brand to reset and push forward to 2023 and New Year's Evil. And with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the action, starting with the uh, winners of the or the opening segment of the match, featuring the winners of the Iron Survivor Challenges. So Roxanne Perez uh, started off the show. Grace Waller would then interrupt. Um, <coughs> Break Ron Breaker alive arrived and basically ran off Grace and Muller. And then Mandy Rose would nail uh, Perez with the NXT Women's title. Perez then challenged Rose with the title on the line later on in the show. And this was an action packed opening segment that rode the high from Deadline. Uh, both Perez versus Rose and Baker versus Waller got a jump start. And it looked like this would lead into a mixed tag team match. And instead, WWE decided to go for a plot twist and then. <coughs> Move the women's title match from New Year's Evil <coughs> to this episode of NXT, which completely changed the complexion of the show, and it gave an exciting hook for the rest of the um, show. Uh, Wesley versus Channing Stacks Lorenzo, and this match started early as as uh, Stacks attacked Wesley backstage. Lee fought back from the early disadvantage to win with a handspring kick. Dijak stood on the apron as D'Angelo planted the NXT North American Champion with a clothesline to the back of the head. Solid match helped by a hot start. Stax looked strong until Lee made his comeback. And I do gotta give credit to uh, Lorenzo here. He did a good job carrying the first half of this match. Now Lee was always gonna win, uh, but you know, it was still a solid match. Uh, and his two future challengers, well, He's got a couple of good ones lined up, and after you know missing out on the next deadline, hopefully Wesley will get a spot on the New Year's Evil card. Uh, Josh Briggs and Brooks, Brooks Jensen uh, basically take Pretty Deadly's rematch with the New Day. So next week, that's going to be New Day versus Briggs and Jensen for the NXT Tag Team Titles. Yeah, uh, and Kingston and Woods. Um, they originally came to NXT, or they they were originally there to celebrate their win at Deadline, and then Pretty Deadly would interrupt and demand a rematch. And Champion said they would give him a title shot if they reset the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Pretty Deadly did not, but Brooks and Jensen did, and got the title shot instead. Solid segment that was carried by the charisma of the wrestlers and the crowd itself. Uh, Santa got a nice little pop there. Uh, Alton and uh, Kit have great chemistry with the new day that makes every segment with between those two teams enjoyable. NXT would be smart to delay New Day versus Pretty Deadly for a major stage like New Year's Evo. So it's smart to have other tag teams kind of jump ahead of them for the moment. And then the show concludes with the NXT Women's Championship match. Mandy Rose versus Roxanne Perez. And Rose had complete control throughout much of this action, but Perez stayed in the fight. Finally, she would plant the NXT Women's Champion with the Pop Rocks and secure the win. Now, this was a long time coming, and Perez certainly earned the title and this moment. It's a shame, though, that NXT did have to rush uh, the title match to this show and rush the title change instead of waiting to New Year's Eve like they originally planned. Um, Instead, this match, instead of putting some story behind it, instead it was all about the big win showcasing the new champion's heart. And in terms of the right woman dethroning Rose, I think, yeah, I think Perez is just that. Uh, she has established herself as the future of NXT, and now she has a title to back, in, back up that claim. And also, she's looked like the best option to carry the division going into the new year as a new champion and she certainly has some interesting challengers that she can match up with uh rose's reign maybe it went for too long but there's no denying uh the uh, level of consistency that she brought to the brand to the division uh so i think you know congrats to mandy on her title reign um, i thought she did well for herself but nxt is ready to move on and perhaps Mandy Rose is ready to move on too. Maybe she goes back to the main roster. It certainly wouldn't make sense. I mean, why, why, why would she stick around? You know, you came back. 
to accomplish what you set out to do, which was win the NXT Women's title. Then you held it for 413 days. I can't remember exactly where that ranks, but you were just like three days shy of breaking Jenna Bezos' record. I think she was number three, maybe. But either way, I don't really see there being a reason for Rose to stick around. So, I guess, yeah, moving on. And, uh, yeah, congrats to Roxanne on her win. Glad to see it happen. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of WWE Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button. Down below.